and welcome to the Boxing Day edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I hope you've all had an absolutely fantastic Christmas with your families. And we've got some more puzzle content for you today. We have got a puzzle called Symmetros by Lishdesh. Now, Symmetros looks like it might be Hungarian, and my Hungarian skills are not up to smudge at all. So um, I'm guessing it either means sums, perhaps, because this looks like it's a, uh, a killer Sudoku combined with some little killers, or it might mean symmetry. Um, and if it means symmetry, that would make some sense as well, because this grid is incredibly symmetric, uh, with all the killer cages seem to be symmetrical around this sort of this central dividing line. Um, although, of course, they don't necessarily have the same totals in the killer cages on either side. Um, now, why are we doing this puzzle, you may well ask. Well, it's because none other than Fistmafel himself has said that this is an absolute beauty. Um, and when Fistmafel speaks, we listen. And uh, yeah, so this should be an absolutely brilliant puzzle, and I'm looking forward to trying it. The only thing I wanted to mention before I did is, of course, uh, to check if you're a patron of the channel, you must try the Pyramid Puzzle Hunt. You must try it. It is quite, quite incredible. Uh, the plaudits are, well, they're off the charts with good reason. I think this is the most extraordinary thing we have ever been able to publish. Huge thanks um, to the constructors behind it. Um, of course, Peter Venus, Panthera, and uh, Aspartagus as well. And I know Pulverizing Pancake also had, um, also was able to contribute a lot of uh, behind the scenes work as well so I mean this this is really quite stunning so if you're a patron please check this out you will not regret it um, and apart from that let's just get on with solving shall we what are the rules we have got normal Sudoku rules apply clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal so for example those four cells there sum up to 16 uh, in cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, if given. Right, okay, so I can see now, I look at it, there are some cages here that don't have totals. In fact, there are several. Uh, oh, in fact, there, are, there really are loads. In fact, most of them. In fact, let's actually find the cages that do have totals. Maybe that's a better way of doing it. Uh, presumably, yeah, digits cannot repeat within a cage is also there. So, um do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now the first thing I'm wondering is do we have... Yes, we do. So this cage at the bottom here, which is un... It doesn't have a number in its top left corner, but it's nine, nine cells large. So because digits cannot repeat within a cage, we actually know that this this cage contains all of the digits from one to nine, and we could then impute its number into the top left corner because of the secret. The secret being that the numbers one to nine add up to 45. So this is really a 45 cage. Now, oh, hang on, one, two, three. Yes, as is that, and given that's symmetrical, we've also got another 45 cage there. Why is my phone buzzing? I will just check. Um, okay, that's not to worry about. I will have to put my phone on silent. You can imagine at Christmas time there is a lot going on. Um, we've also got a trident in the middle of the grid, which is also nine cells large. And we've got two... Oh, that's not nine cells, three... No, that's seven cells. So we've got a seven cell region there and another seven cell region here. Now, obviously, we haven't got a clue what seven cell regions add up to. We just know that, in effect, those those cages are missing two digits from the set of digits one to nine. I mean, there's nothing here, is there? This must be some sort of geometry we've got to do. We're going to have to find cells in this puzzle that are highly restricted because of their... their yeah, I mean, cells like this, this, this catches my eye because of the shape of the squiggly cage here. Where does that digit go in box four? Well, it, let's just hard color that in for a second. Whatever this is, can't go in those cells because of Sudoku. It can't go in those cells or this one because of, you can't repeat a digit in a killer Sudoku cage. So it has to be in one of those two cells. And in fact, that's rather beautiful because now we know where purple goes in column two. It can only go exactly there um, because it can't repeat in the squiggly cage. Look, 
So that cell and that cell are the same digit. And presumably that works the same way on the other side. Yes, it does. It's identical. So we can actually, we can color those cells in by the same logic. Um, oh, right. Yeah, this is, this is already um, attracting attracting me to it because look at what's going on now in this cage we know this is a nine cell cage so it must have a purple digit in it and it must have a green digit in it well where does the purple digit go it must go here where does the green digit go it must go there now i now know that there's a purple digit and a green digit in the 11 cage at the bottom of the grid which feels like it might matter. Um, okay, but now I'm stuck. <laughs> uh, what do we do now? We have got to put... Hmm, I was just thinking I've got to put purple into the squiggly cage on this side. Well, presumably, therefore, I've got to put green into the... A squiggly cage on that side. I'm just thinking about where it can go. I think it can go in that cell, that cell, or that cell only. Ah, ah, now that is interesting because how could it go in this cell? If it goes, if it goes in this cell here, where does purple now go in box six? Well, it would have to go because it can't repeat in this cage, it has to go in this domino where it's actually already, it's already appeared in the trident cage, so that doesn't work. So actually purple in this box, well, yeah, purple, well, to be more precise, purple in the squiggle cage is in this cell or this cell, which might mean something. Um, Not sure. Now I'm wondering whether actually if that was purple, this would be purple. Uh, is that... If that's purple and that's purple... Sorry, this is getting quite complicated already here. I'm just trying to keep track of all these cages. If this is purple and this is purple, then the purple in box five is in one of those three squares, but it can't be in the central square because this is purple but it could be in either of those two positions. If on the other hand, this is purple, then that can't be purple. Then this would be purple because you couldn't repeat purple in the cage. And then one of those three can be purple. So that's no use. Oh dear. Um, so all I've actually got out of that is very little. That's very disappointing. I suppose I can repeat the logic over on this side though, can I? It must be the same. So green, if I was to try and put green in here, in the squiggle cage, green would have to go here because it couldn't go in that domino and that would repeat it in the cage. Yeah, so that is the same logic. So this is not green. So in the squiggle cage, Green has to be in one of those two positions. Okay, and that's exactly the same as we've got on the other side of the grid. And it is, in fact, awfully useless. Um, can we limit green and or purple in the central box of the grid? Is the next question. So the green, obviously, green here rules it out of that, this T pentomino. Oh, yes. L yeah, I can. Look, watch this. Where does So where does green go in box five? Because it can't go in the T-pentomino because then it would repeat within the cage. It can't go in there because that seven cell cage would repeat green then. So green is actually in that domino, which means green is not here. Now, does that matter? Is there some way we can deduce something as a result of that? Um, yes, 
Yes, okay, I can. This cell can't be green now. Because if that's green, where does green go in this box? It has to go in one of those three cells. And that's going to clash with this green. So this square is not green. Therefore, this is the only place green can go in, in the 11 cage at the bottom. So now green is in the 19 cage. And if I can run that logic in the other direction, then I'm also going to get purple in the night. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, I see what's going to happen here. This, if it works, is going to be stunning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, so where does purple go? Where does purple go in this box? It's not in the T-pentomino. It's not in here because purple would repeat in the cage. So purple is in those two squares. We know that this isn't purple because this has been forced to be green already. But can we repeat the logic about whether this can be purple? We can. If that's purple, purple is up here and repeats in the seven cell cage. So this is not purple, which means this is purple in box eight, which means purple is in here. Oh, in fact, look, that's not green. So we've actually got a purple green domino here. And why do I think this is interesting? Well, I've got two digits in this cage that have to add up to at least 10. Because if they don't add up to 10, this square has to be 10 or greater. So these squares add up to at least 10. But in this box, they can't add up to more than 10, or, the, or this digit will have to be a zero or a negative number. So actually, <laughs> ridiculously and incredibly cleverly, this is a 10 domino. And this is a 10 domino, and that means that square is a 9, and that square is a 1. And that means that... What does that mean, then? What does that mean, if anything? Right. I know what that means. He says, desperately checking the logic he's just seen to see whether it is true. Right, check this out. How could, how could this now be purple? That is my question. How could that be purple? We know one of these two is purple in box six. How could it be this one? If it's this one, I have to put purple in one of those three squares, but not the top one because we know that this is purple. So purple would go in a 10 cage. If we put purple in a 10 cage, what's the digit that must accompany the purple in the 10 cage, given that purple and green add up to 10? It's green. So this would be a green purple cage, and that would put two greens in this box, which is not correct. So that is not purple, and that is purple. And if that's purple, that is not purple. And if that's purple, that is not purple. Nori nori. <laughs> and if I can run this logic in the other direction, the world will be a marvellously symmetrical place. Symmetros indeed. Um, let me just think about this. Hmm, this is interesting actually. I'm not sure this logic does work the other way around. Because if this is green, I have to put green in a 13 cage, not a 10 cage, and that has a totally different effect. So here the symmetry is not our friend. Oh no! Um, it genuinely doesn't work, I don't think. How do I do this? Can I... Maybe I can do it by fixing the purples more. Yes, I tell you what I can do. I might be able to work into green by getting the purple up here because purple, purple, purple. That can't be purple because it's in the it's in the squiggle cage. So that's purple, which means that's not purple. Whoops, that's green therefore, and this is purple. All purples are now placed. Now green all of us No. Oh no. It near Yeah. Yes, I think. Where is green in this string of digits? Well, it's not here, because that's green already. 
So it's in one of those two squares, but it's not here for all the reasons we talked about earlier. I've already placed my green in the squiggle cage. So that's green. And if that's green, that's not green, which means this is definitely green, which means that's definitely not green. So that's green, therefore that's not green. And we have now placed all of the greens and we've placed all of the purples. And we know green and purple add up to 10. Now what do we do? Um, little killers maybe. We've got a green on that one. And that one's more interesting. We've got a green and a purple on that one. So those two squares actually add up to 10, which means these two squares add up to 6. So these are either 1, 5 or 2, 4. Uh, we've got a 1 here. I mean, it's quite interesting. If that square was a 1, you can immediately see you would have to place a one here in box nine because one is, well, because this square is not purple, it already shares a, uh, a box with purple and you can't put one in a 13 cage without the other digit being a 12. So if that's a one, you get a one here. Mm, and you couldn't put one in that 13 cage. So one would be in the squiggle box so one would be in one of those cells. So one would not be in these cells and not be in these cells. And so this is weird. One would actually be placed in the top right hand corner of the grid. So one would not be there. So we get one, one, one. Ah, and then the trail might run dry. And what about in this cage? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can quite see how to extend that. It's quite interesting though if that's a 1, but it, I mean there's no reason it has to be a 1. It could be a 2, 4 or a 5 as well. Um, mm, I wonder. Let me just think about this for a second or two. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so what do we do now? We've got... I've not made any use, really, apart from, I think, one deduction relating to that 10 cage of the actually numbered killer cages. Everything has been geometry so far. Ooh, right. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Where does this 10 cage go in the squiggle cage? Oh, I'm getting texted again. Um, now, let's just think about that. Where does this domino go in this cage? It can't go in those cells and it can't go in that cell simply as a result of Sudoku, nothing clever. So it must repeat in this domino. So domino, domino, Two of these three cells are blue, which I don't, well, it means that's, well, we already knew that wasn't blue because it's in the same column as blue. Ah, yeah, okay. That's a little bit, it's a little bit interesting to think about where this domino goes as well, because this domino needs to find a home in box one. And that home, given that reds cannot be greens because they already, already share a box with them, those two squares are red. And that means red is in two of these three cells. Uh, Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Can I do that same trick on the other side then? Probably starting with the 13 cage. So where does the 13 cage go in the squiggle cage? Yes, exactly there. 
So these cages, well, these, these, these cells are the same. And now this cage Uh, hang on, how's this going to work? No, we don't quite know. It's not quite the same. This cage has to go in two of these three cells. And obviously, well, whatever color, let's make this yellow just for a moment. If this is yellow, those two squares are not yellow because here is a knowledge bomb. 10 does not add up. 10 is not the same digit as 13. So these add up to 13. You can't put them both in a 10 cage. So that cell is now yellow. And there is one yellow in the 10 cage. But, but unlike here, we don't know where it goes. Oh dear, this is... I feel like this is close to mattering, but not quite good enough, actually. So two of these three cells are yellow. Maybe, maybe that's what I've got to notate. Two of the, and two of those three cells are red. One of these cells is yellow, and we're getting <laughs> we're getting into a chromatic festival, aren't we? A chromatic Christmas festival, um, and we're also getting a bit stuck. I fear I'm not quite. I'm not quite. Ah ha! And I was about to say I'm not quite understanding how the geometry works. That cell is interesting now. I'm running out of colours in my palette. Let's make this black though. Where does that square go? in this box. Well, it can't repeat in the squiggle cage, so it's in none of those cells. By Sudoku, it's not in the 13 cage. And by the fact it's already got a green in its box, it's not that cell. So it's that cell. And now, it's one of these two cells, which, which I don't, know if we know which one it is so we but we apply the same logic presumably to this square let's just try that on this side so where is this cell in box four it's not in the squiggle cage it's not in the 10 by sudoku it's not purple because purple's there so it goes here it's a subtly different position, but probably has a similar effect on... No, it's better. It's beautiful. Yes. Okay, where does this digit go in box five? Well, it, it now doesn't go there or in its own cage. And it's not green, so it goes there. And that means we come back to this one and we can plonk that one there. So now... Now... The black digit in box one, I think is in one of those two cells, which actually is telling me nothing I didn't know already. Or is it, hang on. Hang on, is that true? Oh, now I'm getting confused because I'm wondering whether or not it's possible for black, the black digit to actually be the same as blue. And it might be, might and see, I think, oh. Or even red. Hang on. Yeah, I think I think I'm I, I was right on the verge of making a logical lapse there. Um, because there's nothing on this side of the grid telling me that the black obviously I know black is not the same as yellow, green, or orange. Or purple but there's nothing over to distinguish reds and blues over this side of the grid hmm, I don't like that yeah I think I think I think I've got to be very careful obviously none of those five cells are black simply by Sudoku but I don't think it would be correct to rule black out of these two squares I might be wrong and there might be a reason but I can't see what that reason is at first blush. So I think I've got to be careful. And presumably that's the same with gray over there. Gray can't be purple, but gray could perhaps be orange or this digit in the 10 cage or that digit. 
Oh no, okay. Wow. I thought we were making amazing progress then, but we've suddenly juddered to a halt. What do we do now? <laughs> what do we do now? Maybe, is there a way I can force the digits I've actually got into an actual cage? I know that nine is not, oh, that's, that's an interesting point. I know that nine and one, so I know purple and green are not, we know they add up to 10, but we know they're not one nine. Uh, yeah, okay, that, right. So that would get interesting if this, if this was even, if that's, if this is the even version of getting to six, then these two, then this has to, oh look, we get a one here. Hang on a moment. We get a one here because, because we've, I just said that purple and green can't add up to, can't be a one nine pair adding up to 10. So these cannot be one nine. So these two squares can't be two, eight, four, six, or, um, well, they can't, they can't be two, eight or four, six. So they're not an even way of adding to 10. And we know that this can't be one, nine. So this must be three, seven, and this must be one, nine. And there's a one here. So this is actually totally forced. And oh, that would be a nine. Oh, it's done it. I've done it. Yes. Right, this, I could have done this ages ago, I think. But look, if this is a 1-9 pair, well, which follows from this being a 2-4 pair, what happens to red up here? Well, you have to put red in, the, in this cell. But that makes green a 4. But green can't be a 4. We've just said there's a 2-4 pair here. So it's instantly, instantly disproved. And this is beautiful because this means we can unwind to here and this is not a 2-4 pair. So this is a one five pair. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how haven't we just gone backwards from a place that was looking really promising and you're right. Ah, oh, you're right, aren't you? So although I now know what this one this is a one five pair, I suppose I now know. I now know the 10 cage is not a 1-9 pair either. So is that useful? So I know these cells are not 1-9. Oh, hang on, where's my... Oh no, it's not that. I was wondering where my... This dot... So actually now I can't put... Is it true to say, I'm about to make what could be a logical false statement here. This can't be one nine. So that can't be a nine. That can't be a nine because that's going to break this or all this depending on. So actually red. Red is not doesn't involve a nine. So this is not a nine four pair. So no, I can't get my head around it. I'm, be I'm being a bit too slow. Let's let's actually fill in the options then. This is two eight three seven or four six. That is true. Now one of those digits ends up here. So this is four, six, seven, or eight. Now this, ah, yeah, okay. This is not nine because that would require a nine here and a, and a one here, which repeats the one in the 11 cage. So if this is not nine, this is not four. Oh, this is beautiful. Good grief. This is so clever. Right. I now know this is a six, seven cage because this can't be an eight. Because if this is an eight, green is five. And if green is five, those two squares have to both be five because we know that green plus purple equals 10. So this is not an eight. This is a six or a seven, which means that that's a six or a seven, 
which means this now, well, it means we know these four squares because we know that this one of these is four, six, and one of them is three, seven. We don't know which way round it goes, but that is true. Which means that, hang on, let's make sure we don't mess this up now. So this is three or four, and this is three or four, because they're the counterparts to these two digits that have to add up to 10. So now, what does that mean? So that means that 10 cage now is either 1, 9 or 2, 8. I sort of feel like I sort of feel like I should be able to know more about that but I can't work out how to do it. Um, this square is a 6 or a 7. Yes, in fact what I should do is go through all the greens and put 6s and 7s into them. Aha, that's going to do stuff down here. And I should do the same. No, I, w I should do the same with red. But of course, I know so so little about red. I can't do it. I should also go around purples, putting threes and fours into them. And let's see now. So this is a six or a seven as well. This is a six or a seven. That is a three or four. Now, what does that mean? Well, the, the only thing I can see immediately this means is it's restricted these 13 cages now because they cannot be 6-7 versions of themselves. So one of these is 5-8 and one of these is 4-9. So, oh, that's it. That's it. Look, now I've got a 4-5-8-9 quad in, in column 9 and that square's got to be a 3. And if purple is a 3, and it is then green is a seven. And if that's three, seven, the red cage becomes four, six, which means we now know that digit and that digit. We know there's a four and a six in this triple. Good grief. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculously good, isn't it? I can totally, totally understand why Fistimafel is raving about this. It's, br it's utterly brilliant. Now, I've got loads of digits in this column now. I just need ones, twos, and fives. Which means that, uh, I don't know, that's the black digit here is a one, two, or a five now, which means the black digit there is a one, two, or a five. It's got me thinking about fives. Five in, in this box is also restricted, isn't it? It's got to be in one of those three cells because we haven't managed to put it down there. Now, if it was gray, five, five, probably is gray because five's got a couple of uh, possible entries in box six there and there. Oh, no, I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong about that. Hang on, why have I put five into these squares when I've got a four, five, eight, nine? That's, that's absolute nonsense. All of these squares need to come out. This is one, two, and six. My scanning is going crazy. Um, yeah, one of the things I'm planning for the new year um, is is to sit back more, and get my mic my mic stand working properly, so that I can actually scan from the place I normally solve Sudoku at. Because the only time I get this close to the screen is when I'm trying to speak into the microphone, and it really affects how <laughs> it affects everything. <laughs> not for a good, not in a good way. Um, okay, so one two six one two six. If I could just work out, in fact, this is lending more credence to the view that perhaps there is an overlap between black and red, which I was aware of. Um, OK, so maybe I've got to do. I don't 
don't know. Maybe I've got to do something with this diagonal now. What have we got on it so far? Ah, yeah, okay, I can get rid of one from this square. If that's a one, those two squares add to eight, which means these two squares add up to 16. They'd have to be a seven, nine pair and they can't be. So that is not one. Um, now, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about that actually for a moment. What I'm thinking is where does this digit go in this box? Is that a daft question? This digit clearly doesn't go in those squares by Sudoku and it doesn't repeat in the squiggle cage and it sees three and seven so it's not those two digits and it sees yellow in its entirety so it's not this digit. So this digit goes in the 10 cage. So if I knew what this digit was then I would know the nature of this 10 cage which is either a 2, 8 or a 4, 6 cage as a result of this deduction. That's not a 6, so that's not a 4. Golly gosh, it's close, isn't it? If I can just get rid of one more digit here. Can't see how to do it though. Maybe I've got to explore this diagonal a bit more. If that's a 2 and that's a 7, these squares have to add up to 15 without using 7. That would be a 6-9 pair. Is that, is that difficult or is that... It would be very useful because it would determine the nature of this cage. Uh, whereas, if this is a 6, these add up to 13. These two squares have to add up to 11 then. Um, but they couldn't be 3, 8 or 4, 7. So they would have to be 5, 6 or 2, 9. And unfortunately, I think both of those things are... I think both of those things are possible. I'm not immediately seeing why that could why one of those is not right. Oh, hang on. What's that digit doing? Can I do more with this one five pair somehow? What else do we need in this box down here? We need two, eight and nine into these squares. Is that in any way restricted by what we've done already? This is one, two, eight or nine. don't know. I'm not sure. Gosh, we must be right on the cusp, I think, of cracking this. But we still haven't, and that is a problem. So how do we make... how do we make more progress? We can say that... We can say... <laughs> know what we could say I've got no clue um, we can say that <sighs> I've got nothing I've got absolutely nothing I'm so sorry uh, <sighs> okay where where is it that we can learn some more about the world here Um, there's going to be something. I suspect it's geometry related. It could just be straight Sudoku. Although, with me having placed all the sevens and the threes, you would hope it's not straight Sudoku. Nine. Oh, yes, that's it. Got it. It was simple after all. Where does nine go in this box? Nine has to go in orange. So if in nine's in orange, it's a four nine pair. So this square is a four nine pair, which means this square is a 5-8 pair, which means that, I don't know what it means, um, oh I know one thing it means, that 10 cage is now a 2-8 cage, here we go, that's not a 2 anymore, 
and that's not a 2 anymore. So this has become a 2. That's not 2. That's not 2, therefore. So this is a 2 8 cage. Um, so there's a 2 in one of those cells by Sudoku. And this square is now known. Oh, oh, that's, yes, yellow is 5, isn't it? Well, the yellow is 5 in this position because 5 hasn't appeared in this box. 5 is now ruled out of that cell. 5 in box in this box here has to be in one of those two positions. OK. Now, does that do any damage to this? Of course it does, yes, because now these have to add up to 15 and they don't involve a 7. So this is a 6-9 pair, which places the 2 which means that it places the two in this box. Yeah, we're, we're away, we're away. This is very exciting. Eight, nine pair here. So this is five, this is eight. This is a six, nine pair. We've got nine up here. So nine, six. Um, that squares now, oh no. Well, yes, I need four and six along this row. There's a six here. So that's four. That's six, that's four. Um, this squares a one to finish but this box which makes that a six that a six that a six that a one just using our logic we've already got so oh look yeah so black did become red i know these strange sentences sometimes get uttered at crack on cracking the cryptic but they are important things to note so four moves down here these squares are one five eight triple and we can't do anything with that Okay, but that's still good. It's still, I think, yeah, now this one is resolving the whole of the 16 diagonal. So we've now done our two little killer clues. And what do we do now? That's the next challenge. I'd love to know what this blue is. Can we work that out? Is it the same as this? sure many of you many of you are shouting at me explaining why it can't be I I mean I can see if blue was 28 that would be a 28 pair that that looks possible oh no it's not because of the six here so six has to be in one of those two cells so this is not so this is not two two eight which means it's one nine and I bet there was a simpler way of working that out but I have worked it out in that way so this is one nine this is one nine, that becomes nine, that becomes eight. These two squares are now known. There are two four pair with two over here. So two and four go in the grid. Five and eight go into those two cells, which means gray is one of them. So gray is five or eight now. Uh, <laughs> that feels like it should be resolved, doesn't it? Um, and we can put twos, fives, and eights into this column, and that's not five. And that could be anything. No! <laughs> uh, okay. All right, well, let's have a look. We, we do know a lot about box eight that we've not filled in. We've got to put fours, eights, and nines in. And we've got to put twos, fives, and sixes in. And we can do six out of this one. 9 out of this one. We can, uh, yeah, okay. And now I'm quite tempted to use these dominoes, look, because three of these digits, oh no, two of the digits actually only. Two of the digits are restricted now in box two. So the four has to move down here, which rules four out of that cell. And five is over here. Oh, look, yeah, there's a five here. So that seems to have to be a two. Ah, this is a two by Sudoku now. So two is in one of those. Oh, I don't believe it. Two is in one of these three positions, all of which seem to be possible. Six here is, yeah, six here is placing the six in box two, though. So that's a six. This is now a two, four pair. So now at least we know these three squares. They've got to be one, five, and eight. And I can see that square therefore is the eight, 
we get a 1-5 pair beneath it. That 8 is giving me a 2 over here. Ah, uh, this must be... <laughs> is, it, is it really still not done? How do I ever resolve the top if this is not done? It must be done. I've just missed a trick. There must be some way... Oh, no. Maybe it's... The only other thing I can think of is it's this 5-8. So this cell could resolve the whole of the top. We need to know what this cell is. Which in turn means that we could resolve it this way by thinking about these two digits. Ah, yeah, look, we've got a 5-8 pair here, which means that square's a 1, getting me the 1 and the 9, the 9 and the 4. So those become a 5-8 pair. So now we've got a 5-8 pair in this row, which means this square's a 4 by Sudoku, and that places the 8, the 9, and the 4 down here. Now we need 5 and 6 into this column. So that's the 5, that's the 6 because of this 6 here. And this 5, I think, is going to unwind the whole of the top of the grid because that becomes 8, that becomes 8, that becomes 5, that becomes 8, 5, 5, 1, 1, 9, 9, 4, 4, 2, 2, 8. Isn't that incredible? 8, 5, just by Sudoku using this 8 here. And we've got one and nine to place. One goes here, nine goes here. And I think we finished the puzzle. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's an amazing, amazing construction. One of the most memorable puzzles I think I've solved recently. Just stunning. The whole... The way the geometry works at the start to force these, um, these purples and greens to be... Um, a pair that add up to 10 is so gorgeous. The use of the 11 cage and the 19 cage to do that is it's perfect. And then I'm not sure whether I took a bit of a long way round after that. I sort of was able to do a bit of colouring, but it, in the end it all came down to realising that if you made this an even pair, a 2-4 pair, you got into a lot of trouble with trying to make this a 1-9 pair. Um, especially with this this cage here, because basically it forced a four into into green, didn't it? When we started this sort of idea with this this being a two four pair, so this just couldn't be a four. And after that, it sort of I mean it was still gorgeous. After that, it really was. There was a lot of interesting logic, um, but that really was the break in. I loved the way that the deductions we made. Re, re the 10 cages over here and this being a, a 6 7 pair forced a 6 7 into this cell which then forced the 13 cages on the right it, it it's it's such a perfect puzzle good grief loved it what a christmas treat thank you very much lishdesh thanks for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic